Welcome to Introduction to Data Acquisition and Signal Conditioning. The agenda for today's presentation covers fundamental signal conditioning. It comes in two parts. Part one covers three topics, which include amplification, instrumentation amplifiers, and filtering, which will be covered today. Part two includes four topics, attenuation, isolation, linearization, and circuit protection, which is contained in a following webcast. So first is amplification. True data acquisition systems are quite different than the familiar two or four channel instruments that a lot of engineers use for recording and analyzing signals in the lab. For one thing, data acquisition systems contain substantially different input architecture and can measure and store hundreds of channels of data at the same time, even though most of these systems use only 8 to 32. A simple data acquisition system contains a switching network or a multiplexer and an analog to digital converter. The instrumentation amplifier that we will be discussing sits between the multiplexer and the ADC. Each of these individual circuit blocks has unique capabilities and limitations, which define the performance of the system. The ADC is the last stage in a series between the analog domain and the digitized signal path. In any sample data system, such as a multiplex data acquisition system, we need a sample and hold stage in front of the ADC. The ADC can't digitize a time-varying voltage to the full resolution of the ADC unless the voltage changes relatively slowly with respect to sample rate. Some ADCs contain internal sample and hold circuits or emulate the function. For the rest of this discussion, we'll assume that the ADC block includes a sample and hold circuit, either inside or outside of the chip, to stabilize the input signal during conversion. The primary parameters that concern ADCs in data acquisition systems are resolution and speed. ADCs selected for data acquisition systems typically run from 20 kilohertz to 1 megahertz and have a resolution of 16 to 24 bits. They also have either unipolar or bipolar inputs. The unipolar type typically ranges from 0 volts to a positive or a negative voltage such as 5 volts. The bipolar type typically ranges from a negative voltage to a positive voltage of about 5 volts as well. Many data acquisition systems can read bipolar or unipolar voltages to the full resolution of the ADC, but they need a level shifting stage to let the bipolar signals use unipolar ADC inputs and vice versa. For example, a typical 16-bit 100 kilohertz ADC has an input range of minus 5 volts to plus 5 volts and a full scale count of 65,000. Zero volts corresponds to a nominal 32,000 count, which is about half the scale. If the number 65,000 divides the full 10 volt range, the quotient is an LSB or least significant bit of 1.53 millivolts. Multiplexers need low source impedances to work well. The reason is easily explained with a simple RC circuit. Multiplexers have a small parasitic capacitance from all signal inputs and outputs to analog common. These small capacitances affect the accuracy of the measurement when they are combined with the source resistance and fast sampling rates. A simple RC equivalent circuit consists of a DC voltage source with a series resistance, a switch, and a capacitor. When the switch closes at time equals zero, the voltage source charges the capacitor through the resistance. When charging 100 picofarads through 10,000 ohms, the RC time constant is one microsecond. In a 10 microsecond time interval, where two microseconds are available for settling time, the capacitor only charges to 86% of the value of the signal and introduces a major error but a 1,000 ohm resistor lets the capacitor charge to an accurate value in 20 time constants. This diagram shows how system input impedance and the transducer source impedance combine to form a voltage divider. The divider reduces the amount of voltage to the ADC can read. The input impedance of most input channels is 1 mega ohm or more. So it's usually not a problem when the source impedance is low. 
But some transducers, like piezoelectric sensors, have high source impedances and should be used with a special charge amplifier. Also, multiplexing can greatly reduce the data acquisition system's effective input impedance. Here, you can see the effect of charge injection. To view the remainder of this tutorial, please visit the on-demand tutorials in the resources section on Measurement Computing's website at www.mccdac.com.